Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about some book recommendations for general preparedness. So let me start with the herb books first. Now I do have some favorites, but that doesn't mean you have to stick just with those. Now my top number one book to recommend to anyone who's getting new into herbs is Amy Fuel's The Homesteader's Herbal Companion. This is an excellent book, very well done. Amy is a wonderful person. She is the founder of the Homesteaders of America conference that happens every year. And she also has her own YouTube channel channel I suggest you check that out but I will be linking to her book below it is very well done lots of recipes in here this has become my top favorite herb book and the first one I'll go to and then along with that even though this isn't exactly an herb book it does talk a lot about herb use in caring for chickens and I've mentioned this one in quite a few videos and so this is one of those I feel is a must-have whether you're new to keeping chickens or you've been keeping them for years but you're looking for more natural means of taking care of your chickens and because of this book I was able to save a very very ill chicken last summer. A couple other of my favorites is, I'm gonna show these side by side because virtually they're the same book. I actually got them both at garage sales. They're both the Rodale's herb book. One, this one's uh, printed in the 70s and I think this one was in the 90s, but I happened to pick them both up at garage sales for 50 cents a piece. Uh, two different, totally different garage sales. So I don't know what we're gonna be looking at uh, for garage sales this summer if that's going to be a no-go or if people be allowed to have them but that's one place if you have such things but uh, even though I'll be linking to a lot of the different books down below for Amazon it doesn't mean you have to purchase the books new this is what I like about Amazon especially if you can't get out and go to garage sales and stuff like that is you can go to the book and then go to the section where it says, you know, available, used, and new, and you can find various levels of books. And the great thing about books is as long as all the pages are there and you can read them, they're still good, even if the covers all beat all the heck. If you can get the book for only a few dollars, you're going to be saving yourself a lot of money. Uh, so yes, this is a good one because it's an illustrated encyclopedia. The newer one's a little better because it has more colored photos in it. Uh, so I recommend this one more so than this than this older one, but it is nice to have both of them in my library. Another one that's a little more cost effective is uh, Kat Ellis's Prepper's Natural Medicine book. So this one I also recommend. You're not going to see any pictures in this. It's very simple, but that's what helps keep the cost down and that it's paperback so this might even be what you want to start with i'm still going to recommend amy's book first though i think that should be your top one to get into your library and this is a pretty nice one that was sent to me from a subscriber down in australia and this is one that's really popular for australians and if i can find this one on amazon i'll link to it below you can tell this is a very excellent book so uh how can i use herbs in my daily life so it has over 500 herbs, spices, and edible plants. Again, more specific to Australia, but that doesn't mean for us in the US or Canada and other places, we can't find a lot of these same herbs. And then the other one is not necessarily gonna be one I recommend for everyone, but something like it, depending on your area, which would go like with the Australian book there. And this, this is one that was sent to me by Mary over at Mary's Nest, and it's Pacific Northwest Medicinal Plants. So if you live in my area, this is an excellent book very well laid out lots of great photos and descriptions but obviously if you live in a different area try to find something similar something that's more about your area because just like a lot of the herbs that are in here if you live in the southeast you're probably not going to find quite a bit of what's in here some maybe but not all and vice versa so try to find a book that's more to your location so that way you can learn how to forage and look for certain herbs and that's going to play into a couple other things i want to talk about book style so i'm done talking about the herbal books the, another one would be, this is one I came across at a garage sale. It's got little scribbles in it. It's got a copyright date of 1942, and the name of this is Food Gardens for Defense. So if you are not into gardening yet, 
getting a, a good gardening book on hand, something that talks about how to garden. And I recommend going with either vintage books like I have here or new books. Get yourself a good garden book, especially if you're totally new to gardening or you haven't started yet, getting a good hard copy on hand. And by the way, I meant to say this at the beginning, I'm talking about books hard copy books because when we're talking preparedness you need to have good hard copy books on hand yes i use the internet daily for looking stuff up because it's quicker and it's easier than me going and grabbing my books but if something happens whether it be a major grid failure or simply a, an internet outage that goes out for a long period of time having hard copy books is incredibly important i see a society of people that have become too dependent on digital information when you're going to need hard information on hand because when all that digital stuff is not available to you you'll still have this on hand even if it's just a temporary outage you're still going to be grateful you have some hard copies on hand so anyway uh this is actually the only gardening book i have because all of my gardening is pretty much based on and i'll talk about this again in another video on trial and error because i love experimenting and learning things on my own and figuring out the best way it's going to work for me let's go into another topic and that is just general health and so i have two books here this one i managed to pick up for a dollar. Copyright of this one is 1923. The Home Physician, A Guide to Health. Now, I am a collector of vintage books, and I do have a couple of videos out about my vintage books. I talk about more, some of what you'll see here, but more of some other ones that I don't show here. So if you're curious about some of my collection, you can check those videos out. Some of this won't apply completely to today, but some will apply better than modern medicine of today. It's just going to depend. I thought it would be an excellent addition to my library, but to go a little more new, I've had this for probably 30 years. And so this is, and I'm sure they probably have an updated version of it, but this is the American Medical Association Encyclopedia of Medicine. Now, a lot of you have been following me for a long time know I'm all about natural medicine. However, having an, a good thorough book like this on hand can help you determine uh, certain ailments and illnesses. So for example, when uh, my son, my oldest son got really ill one year after playing in the lake, a local lake, and he just kept getting sicker and sicker and was losing weight. And we couldn't, we didn't have health insurance. I couldn't afford to just run him to the doctor on a whim. So I pulled out this book and did some study into it and was certain that it was Giardia. And so I took him to the doctor, did all the tests, and I was correct. So I'd already had it figured out before I even took him to the doctor. So I, at least at that point, even though I still had to go to the doctor, I knew already what to gear, gear it towards when I was talking to the doctor. Another thing was, is when I was, uh, after I had my second child, I broke out with a horrible rash from head to toe and the doctors had no idea what it was, the local doctors. And so I started doing my own research into this book. We didn't have internet then. And I was able to figure out through this book what the doctors here could not figure out. And then was finally able to go see a specialist. And it, it was actually a rare condition that some of us women have that's brought on by the pregnancy hormone. But at any rate, I was able to figure it out after they were testing me for all kinds of things we finally were tested for the right thing so i highly recommend this because even if you do end up going to natural remedies that you know you go back to your herb books to be able to uh remedy whatever the issue is if the if you're able at least having a good book like this on hand will help you be able to ascertain what the problem is to be able to figure it out now let's talk a little bit about food preparation so i'm going to get down here uh one of the top most popular canning books on hand is the ball complete book of home preserving now i rarely use this book however if you're completely new to canning and you, you're just you're needing ideas for recipes this is highly recommended and i will link to it down below if it's available for a decent price. Last I looked, it was like $300, which is insane. You should be able to get this book from 
for anywhere from 10 to 20 dollars tops don't pay more than that for it that definitely is price gouging when you see that but it is an excellent book i highly recommend it but if you can't find this one for a good price or i can't find a link to this one for a decent price then i'll link down to one that i believe is comparable that uh, you can look into now if you get yourself an all-american canner it does come with an excellent book that's going to give you a few recipes but mostly what i look at is i want to know uh how long i need to process a, the, a meat or a vegetable or a fruit that's what's important to me not all the fancy recipes and then obviously knowing the basics of how to run your canner so to me the all the book that comes with the all-american canner was plenty enough i really personally didn't need this book but for those who are totally new to canning it is recommended to get it, this one or something like it and then on to more about food preparation when you're talking about cookbooks now i almost never use cookbooks because i'm always coming up with my own recipes and making things up but i still like to have some good cookbooks on hand if i'm like man there's something i've never thought of or never tried i want to have a good base recipe to go off of and then i can make up whatever i want from there what i recommend looking for at that point is don't go with your new cookbooks new cookbooks are almost always nowadays uh, a box of this a can of that and a package of something else go for something old i found this this is a 1950s book here i found this cookbook what's it called the american woman cookbook and i found it for 50 cents at a rummage sale just before they started using cans and packages and boxes of things in their recipes so that's the kind of thing you're going to want to have on hand because you might not be able to find a can of this or a package of that but you might be able to grow a can of this or prepare your own package of that if it's a certain kind of spice blend so looking for vintage cookbooks is highly recommended here's another one this one this one's super cool this is called compendium of cookery this is actually antique and you can see the yellow pages i love it but look how the recipes are laid out this is actually written much of the way i would do a recipe i think that's part of the problem with a lot of fear that people have of cooking and baking is you think that all of your ingredients have to be absolutely precise now there are a few things that yes you do need a little bit of precision but believe it or not when it comes to jam making you really don't if you're if you're not depending on store-bought pectin you can make jam without pectin and you don't have to go by their sugar ratios and all that just throw a bunch of fruit in a pan and start cooking it and you can have some jam and whether or not you add sugar is up to you you don't need the sugar to get a good jam and i have a video on making jam without pectin and low sugar i actually did two small batches i did one without sugar entirely and one with a low sugar and no no added pectin now obviously it's going to depend on the fruit you use that is going to have a play in it so you want to be able to learn how to blend your different like your low pectin fruits with fruits that are higher pectin or make your own pectin out of uh, green apples or crab apples i've done that before too that's my recommendation when it comes to cooking is look for some good old cookbooks something that's thorough something that taught like this one this one here is very thorough it talks about a lot of a lot of things that people used to do that people don't do much nowadays and that's why this kind of thing is just invaluable information and now i have a couple more topics i'm going to cover i bought these probably again at least 25 30 years ago this was back before they were these three books were put into one book so i will link to that one book below but this is the Taitwa gazette now the reason i say this is that i mean i loved these books this was one of my best book purchases ever along with this american medical book here is that i've turned to this so many times there's recipes and ideas in there of all different kinds now not every single idea in there is going to be suitable to you and your needs but it will at least give you ideas i read through all three of these books and was enthralled with them i love them and one of these days i'll probably read through it all again it has ideas for anything you can think of i definitely recommend getting the complete uh, tightwad gazette and then the last thing i wanted to talk about is having on hand 
especially if you have children or grandchildren along the way like I do. This is why I've been collecting books like this for years, knowing that someday I'd have a grandbaby on the way. I have readers that date clear back to the late 1800s. This particular one doesn't actually have a date printed in it, but you can tell it's pretty old, but it's a classic. Look for some classic books for your young people. There, so there's that. Here's another one, Huckleberry Finn. I believe I bought this years ago for my kids from Amazon. I think I got it because um, I was, was looking for both being able to get the original versions of the book as well as something that was vintage. And then at a garage sale, this is actually a 10-part book set and this was excellent. I think they came out with a book each year for a period of years. I think it was like 1901 was the first one that was printed and then went up from there. But anyway, the whole series starts with like preschool age children and they're all readers and it goes clear up to about college level age. And when you're talking about readers for children, you want to again go back to old books because there's a huge difference in how they're worded and what is expected out of the child of you know 50 100 years ago than what you see in readers of today and if you go check out one of those videos i put down below i actually read a section out of a out of the 1899 or or 1900 reader that i have for fourth grade and you might be a little surprised of the kind of wording that was in there. And so especially if you're homeschooling your your children or your grandchildren, those are the kind of readers you want, not these lame, simple, dumbed down books of today. I have quite a few older books. Now, obviously some are simpler for younger children, uh, but here's another one called To California by Covered Wagon. This is another older book that looks like maybe it's from the possibly from the 50s. This is 1954. So they, those are the kind of books I look for. I have tons of them. I have tons of books. They're going to have messages in it that are going to be cleaner without the kind of agenda you see pushed in a lot of children's books of today. If you're able to get out and go garage or yard sailing or rummage sailing this summer, start looking for good classic children's books especially the older ones if you can't do that then again go to places like amazon i like amazon for this because you can read reviews and you can find all kinds of used books out there some of them people are going to ask way too much for but if you keep hunting you can find some good ones for a decent price and and i found a couple you know at this last last year's garage sale i found a couple of kids books that i had when i was a kid and they were like brand new i don't think the kid that had them ever even read them and i snagged those up because they were a couple of my favorite books when i was growing up just a few ideas and a few topics that you might want to consider obviously you don't have to limit yourself to just the books i showed you because i have way more books in this but this was just to kind of spur you on to give you some ideas of things to look into what i would like you to do if you're watching this video and you're into collecting hard copy books for the sake of preparedness. I would like you to go ahead and put some of your suggestions down below so that we can all read your comments as well. And then one more thing I almost forgot to mention. It's an online manual you can find that's got, I don't remember how many pages, but it covers every topic. And it's I believe from the late 1800s. There's a link you can go to and download it for free. So if I can find that again, I will put it down below and I recommend it. I still haven't done this yet. I recommend printing the whole thing off because it's not always going to be available. Even though you can download it, if you lose that digital copy and you don't or you still have the digital copy but you don't have a computer or a way to open that file you're still going to want to have that hard copy which i've got to get around to doing if i ever remember so anyway it's excellent so much information you'll be surprised you know there's information about gardening about tanning about building things about medicine sewing crocheting knitting animal husbandry it's all in there so 
check that link out and if you don't see it in the description box down below don't forget to click on show more or that little gray arrow if you're on a smart device uh, then remind me to put it in there oh here's another one you may be able to find some books on food storage i don't have any i can recommend on actual food storage but i would have no doubt that these other older cookbooks and gardening books would probably give you some good information on that as well but maybe some people out there have some good ideas on food storage books that you can have on hand Okay, well, I hope this helps get you started on your preparedness library. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.